and the Western Mustangs ends up getting the point there. It looks like the ball was deflected and then went out of bounds. So a good kill there for the Mustangs. Of course, Humber did win their game yesterday. <coughs> and they were up two sets to nothing and then almost lost it as the varsity University of Toronto Varsity Blues came all the way back and Humber had to go into the last and final set and they were able to pull out a win. And the Mustangs will get a point there off some miscommunication there on the part of the Hawks. And it was almost another service error. Ends up working out for the Mustangs as it hits the top of the net and then just falls right in. And nothing the Hawks can do about that. That's just a miss. That's just an unfortunate uh, bounce off the surface there. It's just regroup and getting us uh, past this next time. And that time, the ball does go crashing right into the net and ends up on the Western Mustangs end of the gym. So. We well, see, we'll sorry, Mo, we see uh, the Hawks trying to establish the middle early here between Gomes and uh, Gary Lindsay here in the middle, number six for the Hawks. Um, have a little bit of difficulty early, but it is a feeling out process once again, first uh, game of the day, so they can be, uh, they have some room, especially early on in the set. And Lindsay, a second year player, and we're going to get a timeout here. Western up 7 to 4. And of course, this is a best of five. And the sets are up to 25 points. And currently the score is seven to four for the Western Mustangs. And they're gonna be serving it off right here to resume play. And that ball may have been heading out of bounds. We wouldn't know as the Hawks player, unfortunately will deflect that. Wasn't able to keep it in bounds. So the Mustangs getting a service ace there. And that was Nicholas Kiban almost getting the dig there. attempting to get that dig at that time as well and of course could not get that so the Mustangs here building on to their lead now up 10 to 4 and a big game here as the Mustangs, they're back-to-back -back Humber Cup champions. They beat York University in the finals in 2015 and they beat Mohawk in the finals in 2016. Humber also a Humber Cup champion that they won in 2014. So champions row here to start things off. Um, We're seeing here early on in the game, Mo, Humber's really struggling to receive the serve from the Western Mustangs. And that's uh, 
not being able to build a lot of consistency and consistency in their offense when they can't get a nice pass up. Uh, and that's a big reason why the score is what it is. And Western was a 11 and six last season. And uh, the Mustangs, they're just gonna continue on with their rally 13 to four. And they're really running on all cylinders right now. They're running the ball, they're spreading their offense left, right, and middle. Uh, and they're just really uh, making the Hawks work for it. Uh, the Hawks just don't have an answer right now. And the Mustangs also not playing with their former tournament MVP. He is a recent graduate, Mike Shoja. And the Hawks now, they're going to respond, finally ending the rally. And it's 5 to 13. That was Quinton Hudgens coming off the bench there. Will, Coach Wilkins had subbed him in just a few points earlier and getting the block. Blanchett, he gets his spike blocked right there at the net. So the Mustangs picking up another point here, and Evan Cranshaw is going to serve it once again. We're seeing a bit more frustration from the Hawks, and that's obviously uh, understandable, being the score what it is, but uh, it's about how they can respond to finish out this set and move into the next set. Cranshaw with a nice serve there. Forcing Keyben to bent his knees down and he just could not elevate that ball so another ace there for Evan Cranshaw the third year player. Serving from the Mustangs is much more consistent than it was uh, against UFT yesterday. UFT was missing a lot of serves and today we're seeing a lot more consistency from the service line from the opposing team for the Hawks. And, uh, yeah. and Cranshaw that time hitting it right to Blanchett and Blanchett was having trouble controlling that one as well so Cranshaw Picking up another service ace, and that's going to extend this Mustangs lead. They're up 17 to 5. Big lead here. And Mark, if you are a member of the Humber Hawks, what adjustments are you making? It's about building momentum for the second set, right? This set, you know, while you don't want to say it's a lost cause, it kind of is. Uh, really, it's about making the right plays, the smart volleyball plays that are going to get you in the right mindset, moving into so you can reset in the next set. Because at this point, you're just trying to do the right thing. You're trying to, you know, like I was saying, smart volleyball plays. Um, and that'll build momentum for the second set, right? Because it's just one set. It's a five-set match. You have time to come back. Like we saw yesterday against UFT. UFT was down two sets. They came back to bring it to a fifth. Uh, so it's about right now just sort of settling those nerves. Maybe it's early, right? You don't know really what's going on in their heads. So, you know, take a breath, reset, go out there, do what you know how to do, and let's build for the second set. And the two coaches for both teams have a long history with their squads, of course. Wayne Wilkins in his 24th year with the Hawks and coach Jim Sage in his 20th season with the Mustangs. And Cranshaw, of course, going to serve it once again. Let's see if he can pick up another service ace. So the ball ends up taking a bounce off the net. And of course Humber ultimately getting the point there. So the lead now six to 17, still the Mustangs. That was Zed Hamade. Yeah, we're, not, we're not seeing the Hawks, you know, making scoring points. We're seeing the Mustangs make errors. They haven't made a lot of this game. And that's really been the difference, right? The Mustangs have been coming out here and getting it, uh, making plays happen where the Hawks have been sitting back and letting them make the mistakes but they haven't been making any, and that's why Western's up to such a big lead. And that was Hamade once again going up, hitting the ball 
in between the two blockers ends up going out of bounds off the Hawks player so the Mustangs with the kill and Hamade of course a former all-star for this Mustangs team one of their primary players and they're going to say that ball was inbound so an ace there the Mustangs finding themselves getting a lot of points here at the service line And that time they do get an error. What the Hawks need right now is they need someone to come in here and take charge. Uh, with Will Wilkins on the floor, who's a veteran presence, we really look for Clayton Blanchett, the third year left side, to come in here and really try and make a difference in uh, the mentality of the Hawks as they uh, finish out the set. And Blanchett going up strong that time, getting the block and the kill. And it will be Gary Lindsay serving for the Hawks. Been. He's not able to keep the ball inbounds off the serve. So another ace for the Mustangs. And if you're the Hawks, you might just want to be building some momentum for the next set here. A 20 to 8 lead. Blanchett. Great job there. Spiking the ball, getting the kill. That's what they need to do in the next, the next few points here. Uh, and try and extend the set as long as they can, but end up ultimately just building that momentum like I was talking about earlier uh, for the second set. And that was just out of bounds. So it has been a tale of two stories here as the Hawks Still getting service errors while the Mustangs find themselves getting service aces, but not that time as they get the error now. And now Blanchett going to be serving for the Hawks. He had 39 service aces all of last season. This time he gets an error, so the Hawks struggling once again. response from the Hawks after they had the service error last time this time they do get the kill and a heavy hit there from the Mustangs and once again that's just efficient offense right there They've been spreading the ball so well all over. The Hawks blockers have no idea where the ball is going to be. And that gives them a one-on-one -on -one opportunity and the Mustangs just take advantage. And that is in a service error. And that's the new recruit for the Western Mustangs. That was Eric Puris. there for the Hawks Edward Shalganov originally from Russia and he's going to be serving once again so 
So some miscommunication there from the Mustangs gonna end up costing themselves a point. Their lead still 14 to 24. They just need one more point, of course, to close out this set. And Shalgano is gonna get his shot blocked. The Mustangs doing a good job of keeping that ball alive after it hit off the net. And they're gonna end up winning this set 25 to 14. So both teams are gonna alternate sides here. And the Mustangs off to a great start. I'd look for some uh, lineup changes in the second set here for the Hawks. I think uh, Josh Pascal will be coming in for Libero. Uh, replacing Nico Quibben, who was really struggling on the service line, or uh, to receive the service rather, uh, and just that—that that was really the bigger, the biggest killer for the Hawks in this first set. They couldn't receive the ball, they couldn't play defense and, uh, well enough, and pass the ball well enough to allow Jake, their setter, to run the offense the way he wanted to, and that really uh, is a momentum killer in every aspect. Without defense, you can't have offense, and that's just the biggest thing in volleyball. So look to see some defensive changes. Uh, and if that doesn't work, or if that's working but the offense still isn't picking it up, also look for some offensive changes as well. And what might hurt Humber even more is not only the three points that they're giving away, it's the fact that this was a concern they had last time when they played the University of Toronto Varsity Blues. And it seems like they're still searching to improve on that aspect of receiving serves and making service aces. Well, not necessarily service aces, but still, you know, allowing their offense to run, as you mentioned, Mark. Well, it's about, if you talk about getting service aces, really, you don't want to get a service ace. You want to get, you want to put the other team out of the system, right? You don't, you don't want to make it easy for them. You want to uh, make it as difficult for them to get a good ball over them as possible, in turn, making it easier for your offense to run. Just as you mentioned, Mark, looks like a few changes for the Hawks. Colin Skane's one of them. He'll be coming into the game. That's number four. Just a note on Colin Skane's. He actually started playing volleyball last year for the first time. Came out to tryouts and uh, made the team. Really been a lot of improvement in his game over the past year and now into this year. Uh, obviously, the height is a big factor in that. Uh, measuring... At 6'7". Six, 6'7", seven. Six, yep. seven, right? So that's a lot of height out there in the middle. Uh, he's also very athletic. He played basketball previously, and which helped him you know, with that athleticism. He wasn't coming in raw to athletics, but more raw to the sport of volleyball. So uh, Coach Wilkins and uh, Mac Robertson, the assistant coach, uh, middle in his playing days here at Humber, uh, really worked with him last year to develop his middle techniques uh, he's really uh, just been absorbing all of that knowledge and really putting it to practice here. And Jackson Breer also a new substitution for the Hawks, along with Josh Pascal, as you also mentioned, he might be checking in, Mark. Looks like he'll be doing just that. And Cayman Wilkins, another substitution for Humber. And it'll be interesting to see if the Hawks go with a 6-2 here now that Wilkins is in the game uh, with Jake Gomes, the setter who played last set. Uh, we'll have to keep an eye on that. 
And Gomes was the one who ends up serving the ball. And this new look Hawks team, they find themselves down early, one nothing. Those are the two new guys in the lineup there, Greer and uh, Pascal. Uh, just a little communication error off the front, but look to see that get ironed out here in the next few points. And Wilkins jumping up high. He's going to end up soaring and getting a point for the Hawks, and he's going to even it up here, one and one. We can see Wilkins communicating early on. That's that veteran presence. He's a third-year outside hitter. Just really wanting to make an impact here. Probably didn't like what he saw in the first set. And the Hawks were playing with a burst of energy there, but the Mustangs still find themselves getting the kill. who ended up serving for the Mustangs and good job by Humber and there's Pascal right he made that that pass off the serve great pass allowed the offense to run what they wanted ended up being a kill for Wilkins and the player we were just talking about earlier Collins Gaines he's gonna end up checking into the game officially now And the Mustangs end up getting the point there. So both teams going back and forth here. And Wilkins, he's going to end up hitting it out of bounds. Bailey Higgins, one of the few returning players for this Mustangs team, and he's going to end up getting an error. As Phelps will check in for the Mustangs. Crashing right there into the stands. That was, number 14, that was Eric, Eric Pierce. Eric yep. Pierce. So the new recruit definitely wants to be noticed here. And with plays like that, he and might you, just be a great hustle love, play. You love that effort, right? But obviously you want his safety as a first priority. You don't want to see a guy get yeah. injured by trying to get a ball uh, out of bounds like that. It is exhibition after all. And especially a newer player, you definitely want to see him play out a season. And here is Pierce. He's just going to shake things off and head to the service line. And Skeins that time. Big and play from Skeins there, coming in, making a difference. He didn't play in the first set. Uh, but he's showing, trying to prove what he's got here. A few points in. Look to see them go back to him in the middle. And all six foot seven of Colin Skeins going up high there, getting the kill for Humber. Oh my goodness! And a huge spike there from the Mustangs. And I believe that was Chris Newcomb. Newcomb, yep, a former All Star for this Mustangs team. He's showing us why with that kill. That's big time right there trying a big reaction from his teammates. And that was Evan Cranshaw picking up the service error. And so Humber now find themselves in a tie game and a substitution for the Hawks as Pascal will check out And Newcomb really wanted to throw that one down. He ended up mistiming his jump. 
was able to only just give a slight tap to it and Humber ends up taking advantage. They're in the lead 7-6. to six. Skeins with the serve. And the Hawks now building some momentum of their own. That's Gomes. He was getting kind of chewed out by Coach Wilkins there, trying to get him to do what he knows he should be doing. And that right there showed his aggression up at the net and went down and flushed that ball for a point for the Hawks. And Skeins that time. Not what you want, especially with the momentum on the Hawks side gets the service error. Hawks still up by one. And Newcomb, after coming up with that big spike, he's been struggling since that huge play. Now he gets an error. And here is Jake Gomes. He's going to end up serving it. Good serve there. But the Mustangs are going to end up getting the point regardless. Josh Pascal seems a step late on all the defensive plays. He's right there. Just needs that extra quickness. Uh, or not quickness, more, rather, but more just that extra anticipation uh, to get to that ball and make the play. And a tough play there for Wilkins. He had to jump really far out from the net and it's gonna end up costing the Hawks, of course. So the Mustangs even up this game. A big block there from the Mustangs. Once again, another big block, and this time they do get the kill. And I believe that was from Bailey Higgins. And Matt Hooker, he is going to be serving for the Mustangs. And Hooker, he has his uh, younger brother, Ben. He's also on the team. And they're both from Winnipeg. And Hooker's just going to get a service error there. That's the one I like to see from the Hawks. Once again, once the defense makes a play, the offense can make a play. And that's been the storyline for the Hawks this game. Defense has been struggling, which makes the offense tend to struggle. But there we see perfect execution by both sides. And so just a correction from earlier, number 17, it's actually Alex Bowden. Gains coming into the game for Pascal. And that was Eric Pierce hitting it out of bounds, so Humber now up two. Shaw having a big hit there. So Western cutting down the two-point lead now. Only down by one. 
Looks as though the Hawks may have extended the lead there, but the Western comes back with a great offensive play to move it back to within one. And Bailey Higgins, the third year player, excuse me, the second year player. Higgins ends up saving it. The Mustangs still keeping it in play. And they end up scrambling and getting a huge block. Wow. And you can tell by the reaction of their teammates what a play that was. And when a, play, when a great defensive play like that is made, a scramble play, just hit the ball over, the guys really want to step it up for the rest of that rally to really you know, show the guy who made the great defensive play that they appreciate it and they want to make it happen for him. And here we see again. And Higgins coming up big and one. the Mustangs, they get the bounce off the net and it seems like everything is going their way. Bailey Higgins, the six foot seven player, using all of his size, coming up with some big hits and saving the ball from going out of bounds and preventing the Hawks from getting a kill. And Higgins gonna serve this one. And the Hawks gonna respond with a big play of their own. Colin Skeins, another six foot seven player. That's the second big middle run we've seen from him this, this set and uh, look to see them go back to him again here. If it's working, you know, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. And Bailey Higgins, the player we've been touting for his efforts, he's gonna be checking out the game for the Mustangs and Wilkins ends up getting the error. But the intensity has really ramped up here in the second set. And here is Eric Puris. We also saw him make a great diving play or an attempt to make one. Gonna get a, an error there. So both teams picking up service errors. And Jackson Beer. He will be serving for the Hawks. His serve takes a bounce off the net as well. And here is Newcomb coming right back into the game and getting a kill. It's a battle of the middles right now. We have Newcomb for the, for the Mustangs and Skeens for the Hawks. Newcomb definitely a lot more, uh, a bit more veteran presence as an all-star, obviously, we had mentioned earlier. But Skeens is holding his own. He's got two big kills. He just really needs to step it up on the defensive end. I'd like to see him get a block or at least a touch, a slowdown, something like that, uh, just to get his teammates behind him and uh, show Newcomb that he's, uh, he's right up there with him. So Rady Kim will be checking in for Humber. And Colin Skins will be coming out the game. And Kim comes into the game to serve it. Ends up hitting that ball. Greer is going to keep it inbounds. So the Hawks doing a good job of keeping that play alive. Once again. And that one caught the Mustangs off guard. I believe they were looking for the player to do a pass, a set pass. Ends up hitting it right over the net and gets a kill for Humber. Holmes has to be careful if he does that again though. That could be considered a carry if he is not quick enough on it. Uh, usually you see the setters do a one-handed dump, but that was a two-handed sort of uh, dump there. But uh, he will have to be cautious in the future. And Humber now getting their two-point lead once again. Kim with the serve. Kim ends up hitting off his right hand out of bounds. And Bailey Higgins, he's going to come into the game for uh, Nathan Phelps, number 11. Look 
something about indecisiveness there. Gomes looked like he may have wanted to dump it with one hand or made a one-hand set. Couldn't quite decide. Sometimes in the setter you do get caught in between two decisions, right? When you have so many decisions to make in such a short amount of time. I know I've been victim to it before and you just kind of, the ball just kind of does nothing, right? Just lands in the middle of everyone. Uh, so it's just about resetting for the next play, making a good set the next time out. And Newcomb going to be serving it. And we've been seeing Newcomb's power all game long. He also puts too much into that serve. Going to end up checking out the game as Nathan Phelps. The Libero will be coming in for the Mustangs. And the Hawks get a service ace thanks to Gomes there. So Jay Gomes stepping up for the Hawks in this second set. Humber up by two, 20 to 18. Out and Humber, of course, with the ball as Jake Gomes is set to serve. And they're going to say that one was out of bounds. No player ends up touching it, so Humber gets the point there. This is the point in the set where no errors can be made by either side. Uh, whether you're, you know, after 20, whether you're not at 20, you're the one in behind, or if you're at 20, you know, you want to push hard to close out the set. And what a block there. So Humber now up four. One of their biggest leads they've seen in a while. And they don't want to keep giving up those service errors. And just as you mentioned, Mark, especially at this crucial time in the game. They do have a bit of a three-point cushion, but that's still not enough, especially at this high level of volleyball. Teams can so easily go on runs, and uh, closing out is the most difficult part in any sport. So look to see the Western Mustangs push back a bit here, but it'll be interesting to see how the Hawks respond. And I believe they're going to say the player made contact with the net there. Well, the ball actually hit the antenna there, Mo. So okay. that it was a, the push set was pushed a bit too far to the outside. The ball hit the antenna, therefore it's out of bounds. So Western point. So Western now going to be cutting this lead to two. So Humber up 22 to 20. Oh my goodness. Wilkins. Going up high, going up strong. And that's a bold play call at this stage in the game, but one that pays off if you can execute it well, because they're not expecting it. That's what we call an X run. The left side, Wilkins, comes into the middle of the court and runs a bit of a higher ball, and the block goes up with the middle and doesn't see him. It's almost like you hide him coming around there. And both teams making some highlight plays in this second set. Humber getting another service error, though. And that's also been something that we need to look out for. Humber, after coming up with some big plays, they end up getting themselves into mistakes with those service errors. And the Mustangs, they respond with an error of their own. So Humber just needs one more point, and they'll be even things up here one set apiece. We're going to see a double sub from the Hawks here. Skane's coming back in to add some more height in the front row, taking out Kim. And Hudgens coming back into the game as a serving sub.
Yeah. And gets an ace to finish it off. Umber coming back, and they're going to even things up. So both teams now tied one set each. We Man. can see the Hawks are having a bit more fun out here, right? There was not a lot of smiles happening in that first set. Pretty low key. No one was really talking. It was just kind of, you know, next play thing. Here we see guys, you know, they're celebrating after uh, Hudgens got that ace, and they're in a good, they're in a better mood moving into the third set here. So look for them to just continue to improve their play as they move into the third set, and look for Western to respond coming into the third set also after a bit of a uh, lesser efficient performance in that second set. And Hutchins had seven service aces last year. Picking up a crucial win there, of course. Ends up closing out the set for the Hawks. So both these championship teams in a duel here. And this one might go down to the wire. Humber finding themselves in another hard fought game to start their day. And so it looks like Humber will be bringing Gary Lindsay into the game to start things off here in the third set. So Mad Hooker serving the ball. And Mustang's almost getting a kill there off the block. Humber ends up saving it and the ball ends up hitting the net there. Lands on the side of the Mustang. So Humber going to start off with their third set with a point. A bit of luck involved there with that defensive play. But the Hawks have been getting better defensively each set. So look for that to continue to improve in this third set. And that time, a big response from the Mustangs ends up spiking it, getting a big point themselves. That was Evan Hammond 
Uh, we've seen a lot of the all-star Chris Newcomb in the middle, but that was Evan Hammond in the middle there. So look for him to have a big set this time if they keep feeding him the ball. So both teams going back and forth to start this set as well. Wilkins just taking advantage of a sort of block that wasn't quite pressed over the net enough. And Humber going to get the server's error there. And here is Evan Hammonds. Block there, that was from Chris Newcomb. We've been talking about him all game long, and he's been proving all game long why he is an all-star. Breer had nothing really to do with that ball there. It's just too tight to the net, it couldn't really do much. Obviously there's a smarter play than the swing there, but in the end, it's a tough ball either way. Wilkins gets his shot blocked, and Pascal but not track it down and the Mustang's gonna get a kill there. Once again, that's, that's just too tight to the net. It's an easy play for the block to make because they just go right up and they're basically on the ball already and they just shut it right down on the Hawks side. What a play there. Great job of recycling by the Hawks, we call it, right? Just set's not quite there for you. Use the block, get the ball back, get another chance at it. Don't go for broke. Just make a smart play that'll continue the rally. You'll get your next chance, and it paid off for the Hawks in the end. Wilkins, once again, soaring up high and getting another kill. Wilkins coming alive in this third set. Didn't play the first set, was put in this, into the lineup in the second set and really starting to come to, into his own here in the third. And what a performance by the third year player, Cayman Wilkins. Humber ends up keeping it alive and they end up getting the kill. Jake Gomes had two amazing digs on that play. Setters aren't exactly known for their uh, defensive capabilities, but he was making some crazy scoops right there, uh, which allowed the Hawks to end up getting the point. And I believe that was Chris Newcomb. Yes, it was. And there we see it again, just like in the second set. Big time plays, uh, just with the offense that's been spread out by the Mustangs, they still get that one on one in the middle. And if, if for an also like Newcomb, that's that's a piece of cake for uh, for him. And looked like Gary Lindsay was going to go up there, could not get a piece of it. They're trying to spawn through the middle, and that's just that's just a little bit of an error, timing issue. The set was a great set by uh, Gomes. Just work on that timing between the setter and the middle. And the Mustangs now. So I'm building some consistency here. Another point for them. And it will be Brian Ramsey set to serve the fourth year player led the team in total attacks last year 404 Ramsey ends up getting the error there
But Ramsey still one of the better servers on that Mustang team. Had 20 service aces last season. Here's Wilkins. A good serve on his end. And the Hawks just going to bobble it and ends up falling. So the Mustangs get the point. Lindsay was a half second too early on that. Just on his way down when the ball was hit. Ended up kind of taking it with him there along the net. And here is Evan Cranshaw, the third year player. There's a lift call on Jake Gomes there. Bit of a questionable call in my opinion, but it was a little dirty, kind of just shoveling the ball over the net. He'd done it a few times. With his height, it is nice to be able to, he does have that ability. He does stand at 6'6", which is very tall for a setter. So Cranshaw serving. You see Gomes going up at the net again there. And a block there. And that comes from Jackson Greer. And Greer is going to hit that one well out of bounds. As Evan Hammond comes into the game for the Mustangs. So Newcomb, as well as he's been playing, he has been struggling with the serves. Gets an error there, and he's going to head out the game. Wilkins almost getting the dig there. Both teams really scrambling. And it was a big rally there, but the Mustangs ultimately get the point. And Matt Hooker, the former OUA All-Rookie Team member, he is going to be serving here. On the left side, that's number 17, Edward Shagam. Shagam? Shaganov. Shaganov. My apologies. And uh, he's really been putting in work this game. He's got a few nice kills. If the ball's high enough for him, he can really get on top of it and get it down. And that time, the ball goes off Jackson Breer. So the Mustangs up by three. And we're still seeing Western run that middle quite consistently, which is nice to see. It's working for them. Wilkins, we've seen that all game long, getting those kills off those big spikes. So the Mustangs end up getting a point there and Chris Newcomb will be coming back into the game.
Wilkins ends up hitting that one out of bounds. So now the Mustangs up by four. And that's their biggest lead in this set. This has been a very wing heavy set for the Hawks. Both Wilkins and Shalganov are taking a lot of the workload. I, I would say coaches are probably telling Jake, try and spread it out a little more, run a little more middle. Uh, we saw that beautiful X run in the previous set, which is still an outside player hitting the ball, but it's taking place in the middle of the court, so that means that middle blocker has to work that much harder. Uh, so I'd like to see a bit more plays like that in this second set, especially now when it is sort of the middle of the set and you have some leeway to play with the score. It's not super close. You have a few points. If you mess up, it's not the biggest deal at this stage in the game. And play resumes in a sloppy play there by Humber. As they're having trouble controlling the serve attempts. So good communication there by the Hawks identifying that that ball was going out of bounds and they're going to end up getting a point. It was a smart play by Briere there. Saw that the set wasn't quite in his wheelhouse, just didn't take a swing, just made a nice smart ball ball play there, dropped the set in uh, close, made the Western Mustangs work for it. And Brian Ramsey, he ends up getting a kill for the Mustangs. Ramsey had 153 kills total last season. And Cayman Wilkins gonna end up hitting that one out of bounds. So this lead now up to six for the Mustangs. plays by both teams on that on that rally. Unfortunately, the Hawks, the <laughs> losers of that. Both great plays by both sides, though. Both teams getting the blocks there, meeting at the net. But Western now up 18 to 11. Hawks really need to get something going here. And Cayman Wilkins is going to help that cause. Hitting it off the Mustangs player, getting a kill. And we hear uh, Gary Lindsay, he's really calm for the ball. He's the middle for the Hawks and he's running it hard. Unfortunately, they're just not feeding him the ball and the, the, the Mustangs know that. So even though he's running the play really quick and hard, the middles are just peeling out to the left side and right side because they know that the Hawks is such a wing heavy offense. If they were to set him, he'd probably get a one on one or one on none block in the middle. And what a play there by the Mustangs. It was a good serve by Wilkins. But Mustangs end up keeping the ball alive and they get the kill. And that's Evan Cranshaw. And 
Blanchett, he gets his shot blocked. We have not seen Blanchett in the game for quite some time. And of course, he is one of the marquee players on this Humber team. And that one just goes out of bounds. So a service error for Cranshaw. What the Hawks have done here is they've taken out uh, Jake Gomes, the setter, and replaced him with Clayton Blanchett, leaving Cayman Wilkins uh, to take the sets now for the Hawks. And the Mustangs, they did a good job defensively, but they do end up hitting that one out of bounds. So Humber almost coming up with the block there. But now the Mustangs push their lead up to seven. We have seen Chris Newcomb struggle with his serves. We've been mentioning that all game long. Has still had a great performance throughout this game. See how he does here. And once again, another service error for Chris Newcomb. Gary Lindsay is going to have a service error of his own. And here is Matt Hooker. Led the team in assists last year with 547. And Hooker ends up hitting that one as well. Tough break there for Humber. And the Hawks aren't happy there because on the previous play, well not the previous play, sorry, in the middle of that rally, uh, it, it appeared that the Western Mustangs had hit the ball into the net and there was not a touch on the block. The refs see it the end a different way and then up uh, Blanchette had touched the net on his way up on that last block there, giving Western the point. And that looks like the message that came in Wilkins was relaying there to the referee. Humber doing a good job of making their presence felt there though. Getting some big blocks, unfortunately just could not get them to go for points. Humber will take that piece of luck as it ends up hitting the shoulder. Of I believe it was actually his head. His um, head, oh. wow. <laughs> so even uh, luckier there. And then maybe that just could be the spark of energy that this Hawks team needs. Find themselves down 16 to 23. Just need a couple of those bounces to go your way and you'll find yourself right back into this game. And that's just a tough break as both players bump into each other. And they end up, neither of them getting the ball of course after the tumble. We see Gomes back in here. He's been subbed back in for Clayton Blanchett in the back row. So Cayman Wilkins is now hitting again. And it was Gomes who found himself in the middle of that collision. 
And so an error for the Mustangs. And the Hawks team, they were thinking that one may have went out of bounds. The ball did go out of bounds, but unfortunately, once again, the Hawks are on the net. And that ended up costing them the set this time. So that will do it for the third set. So Western wins 25 to 17. Of course, the Humber team still has a set to play, potentially maybe a second set. And we are in a best of five situation, of course. And if we do find ourselves tied 2-2, two to two, that fifth set is up to 15 points. Well, lineup changes here for the Hawks in this third, in this fourth set rather. Quinton Hudgens, uh, who's been a serving sub throughout this game, not coming in to play libero. So we've now seen three different liberos this game. Quibbin in the first set, Hal uh, sorry, Jalapeno, Josh Pascal in the second and third, and now Hudgens in the fourth. So Humber now up one nothing, and this is just the start they want. Just got to continue building on this one. Of course, they cannot lose this set.
So that one's going to deflect off a Humber Hawk. Mustangs now going to even up this game. See, the Hawks are out of rotation there. Didn't quite catch who it was, but it looked to be on the close side of the court here. Number 18 and 17 just mixed up. One is on the uh, wrong side of one another. Yeah, that's an illegal hit there. He's just all over the net there with his uh, hand swing through and ended up just not stopping it and right through the net there. That's an easy call for the refs to make. So a couple of costly mistakes for Humber. Now they're down two. And Blanchette, he comes crashing into the net and also ends up hitting it in the net. So Western... They're just going to continue building on the Hawks' mistakes. 4-1 to one their lead. So Hummer, some sloppy play here in the fourth set. find themselves giving up another point. And the Mustangs just keep it going here. I mean, Hawks need to capitalize on that. That's a one-on-one -on -one block, which can't happen at this level. You get a one-on-one -on -one block, that needs to be a kill for the Hawks. Great job by the Mustangs to wrap that up and get the point. And that time it was the Mustangs who were having trouble getting their offense set up and Humber gets the kill there. And here is Blanchett with the serve. He's gonna hit that one out of bounds so a service error and Humber continue piling up the mistakes. Blanchett, that one is hit well outside. So Blanchett hitting it out of bounds off a serve and now off a spike. Mustangs, they keep it alive here. And Phelps ends up diving on that one. It does go out of bounds. Just couldn't quite capitalize on that uh, party ball there up at uh, the net. Unfortunately, just hit it out of bounds. So the Mustangs were reward rewarded for their hard efforts here. They're up nine to two. And they're gonna get another point here. Ten to two now. And once again we see the ball just getting pushed a little too far to the outside there for the left side. Can't quite corral it in and it's out of bounds off the antenna. And Blanchett, he's frustrated with himself as he hits the ball into the net. We're going to see a timeout from the Hawks here. Coach Wilkins is not really liking what he's seeing, and the score clearly reflects that. 11-2 is just 
not acceptable at this stage in the game for the Hawks. And of course the Hawks, they can't get too down on themselves. They have a game to play right after this one against Brock University. It'll be interesting. Coach Wilkins has really sort of staggered his lineups. He hasn't put like a full on sort of starting unit on the court uh, this game so far. Uh, that could be due to the fact that he wants to reserve some guys for that Brock University game as it is a back to back and they will be playing right after this game. It'll be interesting to see if he does start to sub some guys in here in the end of the set to see if they can come back because it is still early or if he'll stick with the guys, ride it out and put a better foot forward against Brock. And of course, Humber will also be playing their third game today against Georgian, and Georgian was 18-0 last season, so Humber has some tough teams set for them to face today. And Georgian actually defeated the Hawks last year at the OCAA Provincial Championship in the quarterfinal round. It was a hard-fought battle, but ultimately the Hawks ended up losing that. And Georgian, of course, will actually be hosting the OCAA Championship this year. For now, it's the host Humber Hawks down 10. So the Mustangs getting a block there. And I don't expect this game to end in this big of a blowout. I do expect the Hawks to fight back here. It may take them a little while, but don't expect to see a 10-point swing um, by the Hawks, or by Mustangs, sorry, a 10-point lead for the entirety of the set. The Hawks will, will push back here eventually. Uh, and who knows, this service ace, or the service error rather might be the start of that. And Collins Gaines going to come into the game. He should help bolster their height in the front row, possibly help get some defensive blocks in the front row there. And that time the Mustangs just slamming it down there. A huge hit. So their lead up to 11 now. And we've seen so many of those big hits by Western, it's we're almost taking them for granted at this point in the game, right? It's just, those are some big hits coming from these guys and they're not slowing down. Uh, as we spoke about earlier, it is difficult to close out a game, but the Western does not seem to be struggling with that. And Western just having some trouble there. It was just an awkward pass. Sutter wasn't in a great position, kind of didn't know what to do with it, and he's not too concerned. The score being what it is at this point, so they're just going to refocus, get the next ball. Alex Ryan, he's a native from Australia in his second year. Ends up getting his shot blocked that time. Touches off the block there for Western. They get the point. Just so uh, they're so calm on defense. I just want to point out, Mo, Western is not at all phased by the ball staying on their side if it gets blocked. They they trust their system, and they know that they, if they get the ball high, they're going to get a nice high ball set up to one of the wings and be able to put the ball away. And that was Brian Ramsey. Ends up getting the service ace there. And we were mentioning the defense of the Mustangs earlier. And Ramsey, he ranks second on the team in digs with 102. So one of their better all around players set to serve here once again. 
And wow. he's going to get another service ace. So back to back service aces. And the Mustangs now up 14. It is 18 to 4. This is incredible. You know, we, we see teams such as the Hawks yesterday actually in their game had they went up two sets and they did struggle on that third set closing it out but we see the Mustangs here and they are not struggling at all the score clearly reflects that and we've seen play after play of big swings they're being aggressive they're attacking the ball they're really taking it to the Hawks they're not setting they're not sitting back rather and you know hoping the Hawks lose the game they're going out and trying to win the game, which is a very uh, important point to make. And we all know this is an exhibition tournament, but the Mustangs look really focused to repeat as champions. It'll be their third consecutive win if they do end up accomplishing that feat. So Cranshaw checking out the game. And that one just goes out of bounds. So after having a back to back service aces, he ends up getting a service error there. Still a big lead for the Hawks to overcome here. And that looked to initially hit Ryan off the shoulder. Yeah, he kind of misjudged the ball there. It kind of rolled up on his, yeah, you said no, yeah, shoulder he's just or elbow. There, yeah. But ended up still making a good play. And that just shows you how yeah. good things are going for the Western Mustangs at this point in the game. And it was the Hawks. They had a lucky bounce earlier, of course. But this time it's Ryan. And he's going to get a service ace now. And you can see on the Hawks' side, there's just no communication. Guys aren't, you know, it doesn't really look like a team. Everyone's very disconnected. Everyone's in their own sort of space. I'm sure that will be addressed post-game uh, by the coaching staff. But that's what you never want to see in a sport, it's especially team sport. Communication is the most important part of team sports. So that one's gonna go out of bounds and just to touch on the point that you're making here, you definitely don't want that to carry over into the next game. No, I look to see them probably take a step off the court, maybe go back to the locker room. Just take a, you know, don't touch any volleyballs as, as long as they can, because they're gonna be warm. Um, and I just wanna sort of refocus that attitude into this next game. And the Mustangs there just continuing piling it on here. And a pair of substitutions for the Mustangs as well. And Newcomb checking out their lead now 21 to 6. And Blanchett, he gets his shot blocked at the net. So the Mustangs getting the kill. You can see from the Hawks, even their star-studded outsides in Blanchette, you know, still getting shut down by this Hawk, by this Hawk, uh, sorry, this Mustangs rather uh, block at the front of the net. And Humber, they're having trouble all around now. Could not keep that ball inbounds. So just a tough fourth set for the Humber Hawks. And the champion Western Mustangs, they're not letting up here. Again blocked. Another block. Another one, my goodness. And this is just a huge, huge deficit now. 24 to six, and that's probably, of course, gonna probably do it for this one. As much as you wanna believe that, you know, you can get the ball with that, sometimes when you're playing a team like this, you know, it's like you're playing against a brick wall on the net, right? You can't just, you just can't get the ball over the net. Still think it's important, even though Humber probably is going to end up losing this set and the game's still important for them to come up with some big plays and hopefully that momentum will carry over into the game against Brock. Well, obviously, if you end up with some big plays here, it's definitely going to help the team attitude because right now it is very low. 
Uh, and they're obviously very frustrated with how they've played in this set and disappointed also. But if you can end up with a few big plays here, a few stops, then uh, then it will, like you said, Mo, help build momentum for that next game against Brock. And here we go. The Hawks not giving up here. Getting back-to-back -back points. And that point coming off the block. And they're going to get another point on the service ace. So a nice little service run here by Jake Gomes, the setter for the Hawks. And once again, this is, you know, yes and no. It's it's building that momentum that we had just talked about, right? Even this three-point run, that's helping sort of lighten the mood a bit. And that's just a tough way to end the game as Jake Gomes, he's been doing really well at the service line, just gets the air that time. So that will do it for this game. Western ends up taking it 25 to 9 they're going to win three sets to one and approximately at 12 p.m humber will be facing brock university so stick around and that will do it for now with my broadcast partner mark harrison and mo krosershahi will be back with you shortly